Did you know that sleep can affect bone health? It can, and today we're going to talk about how sleep affects our bones and ways that you can improve your sleep and help your bones. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrated Nutrition and also a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. Here on this channel, we discuss all things related to bone health. So let's get started talking about sleep and bone health. Healthy adults need seven to nine hours of sleep each night, according to the American National Sleep Foundation. Many people have insufficient sleep for a variety of reasons, and this tends to actually increase with age. 67% of adults over age 65 report having at least one related sleep complaint. Chronic sleep deprivation stemming from too little sleep and poor quality of sleep contribute to cognitive slowing, cardiovascular disease, and increased risk of type 2 diabetes and osteoporosis. Chronic sleep deprivation is also associated with having a lower concentration of vitamin D. Our bodies need to have sufficient vitamin D3 in order to properly absorb calcium. Several studies with humans show that chronic sleep deprivation leads to having lower bone mineral density, while other research is inconclusive about the duration of sleep and bone mineral density. So I looked at some metadata and the metadata that I examined discussed the difficulty of controlling both diet and sleep of humans over a long period of clinical research. This led researchers to actually create an animal study with rats to more effectively measure the effects of sleep deprivation. The study was conducted according to strict accordance with the Guide for the Care and Use of Laboratory Animals of the National Institutes of Health. The rats who were chronically sleep deprived showed fewer trabecular bone structures. So in our human bodies, we have two types of bone. We have hard cortical bone that makes up the majority of our bones, and we also have trabecular or soft spongy bone that makes up about 20% of our total bone mass, but 80% of our body's trabecular bone is actually concentrated in the spine. We also have a significant trabecular bone in the femoral neck, where our thigh bones connect to our hip bones. So with regards to bone loss, we're more likely to lose trabecular bone than cortical bone. This background information helps to make it more clear what's happening to the rats in the study. So the rats had less trabecular bone. The rats also showed that the new bone that they formed was impaired. It wasn't as high a quality as that of their non-sleep deprived counterparts. With the research in humans being mixed, with some studies showing that chronic sleep deprivation leads to a loss of bone mass and others being inconclusive when looked at, in combination with the controlled study with rats, it leaves me thinking that good quality sleep is actually really important for protecting our bones. Sleep is something that I've always personally struggled with. Sometimes my days are so busy with kids that I can't get my brain to slow down at night and it's difficult for me to fall asleep initially. And other times I have to make a potty stop at night and then my brain starts kicking into action and it's all over and I can't go back to sleep again. Then there's the joy of menopause when it becomes easy to wake up at four in the morning and just not go back to sleep. This is me right now and is probably a little bit too much TMI. Sleep can be challenging for a variety of reasons. Since sleep can be such a difficult thing, what are some ways that we can improve our quality of sleep and the quantity of sleep that we get on a really regular basis? So I have some lifestyle suggestions, and I would also love it if you would share in the comments if you have other suggestions for what's worked for you as well. So sleep habit number one is to create a bedtime routine or ritual. This will help your body to become conditioned to winding down. It's a little bit like Pavlo's dogs who became conditioned to hearing a bell with their eating time. The dogs began to salivate when they heard the bell because they knew that food was coming. Then they began to salivate with the bell even when no food was offered to them. This was because of their conditioning. We can work to condition ourselves as well. Create a settling in routine and some self-care that helps you to relax and unwind in the evening. Number two, 
make your bedroom a calm place where it's comfortable and slightly cooler temperature to make sure that it's easy to fall asleep. Sleep habit number three, be consistent in your schedule. This might be a little bit challenging at first, but it really does make a difference. Sleep habit number four, limit media for about an hour before bed. This one is incredibly challenging for me. It always seems like there's work to be done or kids that need help with their homework late at night that's due the next day. Our brains need time to unwind. Using screens for two hours in the evening can actually disrupt our body's naturally made melatonin surge that helps us to fall asleep at night. So if you're using screens, it's helpful to adjust the light so that it's not as bright as during the daytime. Number five, avoid having a large meal or caffeine late at night. Also, while alcohol might help a person to fall asleep initially, it affects the quality of sleep in negative ways. So sleep habit number six, exercise during the day. This also helps to be able to get better sleep at night. Some light stretching before bed might be helpful to relax and help your body to drift off. This might be the perfect time to actually lie in bed and take one leg out to the side and then at center before drifting off. And habit number seven, if you can't sleep after laying in bed for about 20 minutes, get up and do something without a lot of light exposure. Stay off of electronics. When this happens to me, I tend to fold laundry in the semi-darkness. And finally, sleep habit number eight. Consider taking melatonin as a supplement because studies show that it can actually help to improve the quality of sleep. Melatonin is a whole topic in itself, which could be another video, but for right now, know that melatonin should not exceed five milligrams daily and that it's important to know that you have a high quality supplement because there was some research done in 2017 that showed that 71% of the me melatonin supplements were not correctly labeled with the amount of melatonin that they actually had in them. If you'd like to explore any of these topics further or read the studies for yourself that I listed, you can go ahead and check out the links in the description down below this video. I hope that you found these suggestions helpful, and if you did, please share them with someone that you know and love. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to this channel to get more videos about bone health. I look forward to talking with you soon.